All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we are going to talk about how to do parts three and four in this video. So uh, the first thing you need to do is, is get your image that you uh, submitted for part two. So remember, your image needs to be a picture of your actual drawing. So uh, if your part two picture was great, good, use that. If not, you need to take a fresh picture uh, and then send it to yourself in an email, uh, airdrop it, or put it in your drive, whatever you need to do. Okay, so we're gonna hit open image. So once I hit open image, I'm going to find my image, which for me, it's right there. Um, now, if this pop-up comes up, it's because your image is very large, which is a very good chance that that's the poss uh, possibility. So what we wanna do is, is we wanna make sure we click on the max that you can possibly do, which in this case is the Ultra HD. We want the largest file possible because then it'll make nice smooth lines. So here's one of the drawings that I did. Uh, what I need to do is, because mine accidentally rotated itself, I'm gonna go up to image, image rotation, rotate left, and now I have my picture perfect. Everyone is going to follow the next couple steps. Um, everyone's next couple steps are, are going to be the same. However, after that, it's pretty much just unique to your project. So what you're gonna do is, is actually add two blank layers. So we're gonna add one, we're gonna add two. Put the first one that you added down the bottom. You are next going to lower the transparency on your background image. That is your picture image. Bring it down to 30. You're gonna see how like your image will get really dark and it'll be hard to actually see the lines, but that's a good thing. Because what we're gonna do next is we're gonna click on layer two. We are going to hit the shape tool. You'll notice that it'll default to design, but we want draw. Leave everything else the same and click and drag over your entire image. You should see your drawing a little bit better. It's gonna look like it's faded out, but that's that's actually a really good thing because it'll make it easier to trace. So if you notice, I have my background layer, I have layer two is my white layer, and layer three is still blank. Now to start tracing and doing the actual project. So what you're gonna do is, is you're gonna come in here and you're gonna grab your brush. So grab the draw tool, you're gonna change your uh, brush down to either five or 10, or you can adjust the number if you want, if it's too thick or too uh, thin, but bring down your step and bring down your softness all the way both to zero. Now just start tracing. If for some reason you notice that your drawing disappears, oops, sorry, my uh, mouse got a little crazy there. Uh, if you notice that your drawing kind of like disappears and fades, you're on the wrong layer. If you don't even see your drawing at all, uh, you're definitely on the wrong layer. Uh, if it's nice, thick, and um, dark lines like I have on my screen, perfect. That means that you're on the right layer. But again, I'm just gonna come in here, and if I need to make corrections, I can do that now. But for the most part, it's a lot easier to just trace a drawing than it is to actually draw using Pixlr, unless, of course, you have like a drawing tablet or something like that. But not everyone has one of those, and not everyone needs one of those. Um, but again, it's a lot easier to draw um, when you're tracing a line than it is for you to like draw from scratch. The other thing I'm gonna suggest is when you are drawing, make sure that you're zoomed in a good amount. The reason why is, is it's a lot easier to draw zoomed in, especially you can get like some really nice fine lines that you don't have to worry about them getting messed up. Uh, again, I'm making corrections as I go. If I don't like the way that my initial drawing was, like I don't like the way that those kind of had like some beady eyes, I wanna do them as like the anime style uh, coming in here and making it filled in. Now notice that I'm not filling them all in right now and there's a purpose for that because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase my brush size. There's no reason that you need to scribble that all in by hand. So we might as well do it 
using a bigger brush so it's a lot less um a lot less time to do it okay and then i'm going to put it back down to 10. if you're doing your eyes like that add a little reflection make sure they're both in the same spot in both of the eyes um preferably the same size as well and you'll get a nice looking animated eye uh, but again just finish your head like i didn't uh when i uh first restarted drawing this uh, when I was demoing this in class, I didn't like the way that I did the hair. So I'm going to ignore those little flaps that I did. I'm going to give this uh, animation like a little boy's cut. It's like a traditional where you do it nice and flat to the head and um, really short. So that's what I'm kind of doing here. All right, and again, uh, because I'm going to want black hair in my character, I'm going to um, just come in here and fill it in. It almost reminds me of like Astro Boy's hair, if you uh, know what I'm talking about with that. So I'm just going to come in, fill it in, nice short hair. Um, if you want to add like ripples in the hair or whatever you want to do, you do that as well at this point. Okay, but I'm just going to do it in. So you would do the entire drawing this way, okay? When you go to submit your um, when you go to submit your part three, you need to make sure that you have the entire thing done, and not only that, but you also want to make sure that it's only black and white. And I will explain uh, that to you in just one second. I just wanted to get the last little bit of my face done, okay? I'm making him look like he's got like a little, almost like Popeye um, side mouth uh, smile going on there. So I'm gonna come in, add some little shine for the teeth. Notice that I'm adding some white uh, and that's allowing me to fill that in. I may mess it up. That's perfectly fine because I'm just gonna come back with a brush and make it look nicer, okay? Um, sometimes you need to go with a super small brush to get exactly what you want. Um, straighten up the lines whatever you need to do and you fix it and you're done okay so now say i have finished tracing my entire person i'm going to hide that original image so you're going to have two layers for part three that you're going to submit just the layer three that's up here and the layer two so the black tracing and the white background that is it okay so your drawing should be submitted it should be black and white like this okay save it as um go up to file hit save and submit it for part three now when we go to do part uh part uh four here's what we're going to do we're going to color in our character now each color just like when we did the historical um photos uh, back way earlier in the beginning of the year where you took a black and white image and you colored it and you added a new layer for every single color, guess what? We're going to do that again. So say I want to uh, pick a skin tone color. So I'm going to pick a color like this. I am going to grab a decent sized brush. I'm going to grab it a little bit bigger than 10. Let's start with 15 and see how that goes. Oh, that's way too small. So I'm gonna increase it. I make sure that I am on this layer three um, because then I'm going to add a, I'm sorry, not on layer three. You're gonna be on background layer. Here's why, when I add a blank layer, when I'm clicked on background, it adds it between layer three and layer four. When you go to add any other layers, you just make sure if it's to be on top of that color, you just need to make sure that this layer is added or clicked and then add it from there. If you want it below that layer, you need to make sure that you're clicked on the layer below that and then it'll sandwich it between. So anyway, so I'm going to, because I'm on that layer four now, I'm gonna come in here and I am just going to start to draw. Now, if you draw outside the lines like I did, whoops, I can come back and fix that. Now, because I added that white, for the mouth, I can literally, uh, on layer three, I can literally just come underneath of it and it's not a big deal. I can just come in and start coloring in my person. You'll notice that in the eyes where I put the little, uh, little shine, 
you can see the white. However, where it's the uh, eyeball, um, you can actually skin see the skin tone color. Uh, even here on the hair, those are mess ups that I need to now come back in and fix. But instead of erasing, the better object or the uh, better choice is flip back to white, come back to layer three, and you just want to fill those in. So actually, what I want to do is instead of adding the white to this layer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another layer underneath, and I'll show you how to sandwich that between. The only thing I want to fix is I want to fix my little black that I got going on here that I messed up, that I missed that little portion of the hair. For some reason, my color is not switching. Not sure why. There it goes. Okay. So I fixed the hair. But now to fix the spots that are between, uh, what I'm going to wind up doing instead is I'm going to add another layer uh, on top of the layer four. So I'm going to hit plus and then empty. And I'm just going to come in with a white. I'm just going to fill in this area in the eye. So now those fill in and I don't have to worry about them. Okay. So now you may go, all right, well, Anderson, what about those spots where you came out over here? Well, that's where we need to grab the eraser because we can't leave that out and about. Now, notice that I just started using the eraser and it created that faded look. We don't want that. We want our erasers to be the same setup. No softness, no step. The size, just whatever is convenient for you for that erasing um, spot. Now, don't worry about, like, say, say, like, down here, I came over where the shirt would be, okay? Um, that's not a big deal, and here's why. Um, when I go to actually draw my shirt, I'm going to, because the shirt is on top of the skin, I am going to add a blank layer, and I'm going to pick a shirt color. Let's do red. And because I'm on a new layer... It will go right on top of the skin tone color. You just need to make sure that obviously you stay in bounds. And it looks like I drew that black on the wrong layer. So I'm going to have to fix that. But that's it. Do this for your entire character. Save it as a JPEG and submit it for part four when I post part four later in the week. Enjoy it.